I want to ask you about something that's in the news today. President Obama is signing this Lilly Ledbetter Act, and right. it has to do with lawsuits. That was a woman who was um, discriminate, <clears throat> discriminated against on the basis of sex at work, and it was pretty well proven, uh, but the law included a statute of limitations after which she could not sue, and the Supreme Court threw out her, her suit, even though the sex discrimination in her pay was pretty well established. Right. She's now retired, and this law lengthens, uh, it's not even statute of limitations, it's that there was a certain amount of time after the suit Sorry, a certain amount of time after the discrimination first started, right. right, the first paycheck that was a discriminatory paycheck, that was when the clock started running on the statute of limitations. But she only discovered it after years, you know this case, right, right. after years of, of, um, of work. So this new bill that the president just signed allows the statute of limitations to start running, that clock to start running, after the first paycheck, after which it's discovered. Does that make sense to you? Well, um, you're trying to balance two things. You don't want people to get away with discrimination, so let's just say that. On the other hand, nor do you want people to be able, if you're trying to run a, a vigorous economy, to be able to go make claims that are 10 or 20 years old. Yeah. Uh, so, th so you're trying to balance the different interests because we're trying to move forward. It's like... Um, maybe it makes sense if you limit the damages to the more recent period. To allow somebody to go back and sue for 15 years of damages after it's all over, you, you, know, you could have laws lawsuits that would sink a society. But, but why not? If the damages were incurred for that long, like in this case, I think one of the issues is retirement. Because she was close to retirement, and right. the pension is based on your final salary before retirement, if she was discriminated against all those years, leading her to a lower final salary, then the corrective actually winds up giving her a bigger pension. That may be a lot of money out of the company's pocket, but why isn't that the only fair restitution? Well, maybe the bigger pension is the fair restitution, but the uh, but going back for decades of, of, of damages is something that that probably liberal economists would argue would, would put a damper on society. So again, you know, the, a legal system constantly has to balance different, d different goals. And just as I can tell stories of extreme lawsuits and abuses of the lawsuit system, you can tell stories of extreme uh, injustice as well. And the point is to come up with a system that doesn't encourage people to view law as a way to make money, but goes back in a reasonable way and, and compensates people when there's been wrong. One of them. the most intriguing parts of your book for me is Chapter 5, Bureaucracy Can't Teach. You compare one successful public school in Newark to the New York City public school system, really. Want to give us the thumbnail? Yeah, the thumbnail is if, if you go into a, any successful school, uh, you will find just second to second, of honest, candid interactions with teachers and students and each other, where misbehavior isn't tolerated for a second, the kids get put, you know, taken out of the court, out of the classroom, and kids focus and learn, and the teachers feel free to be themselves. You go into a New York City school or really any school, and the teachers are cr literally drowning in bureaucracy. There's a rule that says you can't call on a student in the first ten minutes of class because that's when there's supposed to be a mini lesson. There are 60 legal considerations required to suspend a student from New York City schools. Well, you're not sending the kid to jail. You're sending him home, for God's sake. The part that really interested me was that at Team Academy in Newark, you quote the principal saying they don't actually worry much about improving test scores, that it's about culture, school culture, by far the most important indicator of school success, according to you. So you're against the high-stakes standardized tests for some of the same reasons that you think lawsuits are out of control. And you criticize teacher certification as a way of measuring who's a good teacher to hire. And that's fascinating to me because you practically say some people are just born teachers by dint of their personalities. Is that where you're going? That's absolutely where I'm going. And if you read the, the academic literature and the studies, that's where, that's where you have to go. But here's it's, where it becomes a problem because we've all had that great – outlier, as Malcolm Gladwell might call the person teacher, right. who's the fabulous teacher who right. lights up the room and lights up every child who comes into the room. But we have the challenge of mass public education 
in this country. As you well know, New York City alone has 80,000 teachers because we have 1.3 million students. Can you find 80,000 of those fabulous individuals, <laughs> or do you have to go for standard practices to make a large number of average teachers do the best they can? The standard practices drag down the average teachers, too. What they turn them into and just talk to the teachers. Go with, you know, look at the studies of people and observers in the back of, of classrooms. It turns them into a version of robots where they simply go through the mechanics. They don't engage the student. The most important thing about a teacher in the first instance, one, is being able to maintain order, and then two, is to look kids in the eye, to know who they are, to engage them. It's not to be brilliant. It's to be a, 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 role, a human role model who the student has a relationship Mayor with. Mayor Bloomberg and Chancellor Klein would say, look how far we've come in improving test scores, i.e. outcomes, um, in our seven or eight years. Would you dis dispute that? Yeah, I don't think the improvement has been great. I'm, I'm generally in favor of mayoral control and all of that, but I think there's much too much bureaucracy, and there's a great deal to be made here with mutual disarmament between the teachers' union and the Department of Education. If teachers could be judged by whether they were reasonably effective or not, and you got rid of all the bureaucracy so that they could actually express their personalities and be themselves, that would be so dramatically better. Again, all you have to do is go to any good school, and you'll see that in action.